Dream Chaser is a modern-day space plane approaching its first launch expected to happen late this year. Decades prior, the space shuttle was launching consistently and proving itself as an extremely capable and impressive launch system. While by no means perfect, over the course of around 30 years, the spacecraft launched 135 times. These missions were crucial in the construction and placement of key infrastructure still in use today, such as the International Space Station or Hubble Telescope. With this in mind, it brings up the question of what exactly is Dream Chaser's plan, and how does this modern space plan compare? Here I'll go more in depth into some of the biggest differences between the two, the similarities they share, what to expect in the near future, and more. One aspect of the space shuttle that made it so effective was its massive size and specifically its payload bay. A fully assembled shuttle was 184 feet or 56 meters tall and weighed 4.5 million pounds. The bay was 15 feet or 4.6 meters in diameter and 60 feet or 18.3 meters long, large enough to fit a school bus or 50,000 pounds of payload. This unique capacity allowed entire telescopes or station segments to fit with ease. Dream Chaser, on the other hand, is not aiming for the same payload capacity as the shuttle. Dream Chaser is 30 feet or 9 meters long, roughly one-fourth the total length of the space shuttle orbiters. In terms of payload capacity, Dream Chaser is partially configurable, which changes its capabilities depending on the mission. With the help of the Shooting Star Service Module, a transport vehicle attached to the back of the space plane, Dream Chaser can deliver up to 5,500 kilograms of pressurized and unpressurized cargo to the space station. Looking inside reveals that there is space for things like food, water, supplies, and science experiments, rather than large structures. In reality, Dream Chaser is not meant for large payload missions, but instead consistent crew travel and payload delivery. Dream Chaser was originally designed as a crewed space plane, in part under NASA's commercial crew program, capable of carrying up to seven astronauts to and from the space station and other low Earth orbit destinations. This number is quite similar to the shuttle, which carried between two and eight astronauts on each mission. Right now, Sierra Space is trying to first launch an uncrewed Dream Chaser to the ISS. Assuming this initial mission is successful and followed by many others, we can expect work on actual crewed Dream Chaser launches. This leads to the next difference, which has to do with Dream Chaser's variants. Not long ago, it was revealed that the Dream Chaser space plane would feature at least three different designs for various mission profiles and goals. Rather than try to make one spacecraft that could do it all, Sierra Space decided to separate Dream Chaser into multiple designs meant to excel at their respective tasks. This eventually led to Dream Chaser 100 or DC-100, DC-200, and DC-300. DC-100 is the uncrewed variant currently being worked on by the company and is about to launch. DC-200 is the crew version that features a host of engines on the back for an abort capability and other changes. Finally, DC-300, for missions not only to LEO, but also MEO and GTO. One last key difference has to do with the heat shield application and material. In the past, the space shuttle struggled with this design quite a bit. Oftentimes, missions could be delayed solely by the work needed to replace damaged tiles across the body of this massive shuttle. The Thermal Protection System, or TPS, was a system of different protection types, not just silica tiles. They were in two basic categories, tile TPS and non-tile TPS. The main selection criteria used the lightest weight protection, capable of handling the heat in a given area. However, in some cases, a heavier type was used if additional impact resistance was needed. Much of the shuttle was covered with Li-900 silica tiles, made from essentially very pure quartz sand. The insulation prevented heat transfer to the underlying orbiter aluminum skin and structure. In contrast, Sierra Space is quoted saying, SNC engineers have been able to update the TPS tiles from what was used during NASA's shuttle program, with more innovation, better technology, and utilizing lessons learned. They use more modern manufacturing techniques to increase strength and reduce cost. Another difference between the tiles is Dream Chaser tiles are about 10 inches by 10 inches, while those on the shuttle were 6 inches by 6 inches. Dream Chaser tiles are stronger and lighter weight than those used during the shuttle program, and meet all micrometeoroid orbital debris requirements to ensure safe entry, descent, and runway landings for crewed or cargo missions. These, among other changes, are intended to make the tiles even more reliable and easier to refurbish. While there are a lot of differences between the two, they still share some key similarities, the most obvious being a runway landing. The approach and landing phase began when the orbiter vehicle was at an altitude of 3,000 meters or 10,000 feet and traveling at 150 meters a second. The orbiter followed either a negative 20 degree or negative 18 degree glide scope and descended at approximately 51 meters a second or 167 feet per second. The speed brake was used to keep a continuous speed, and crew initiated a pre-flare maneuver to a negative 1.5 degree glide scope at an altitude of 610 meters or 2,000 feet. The landing gear was deployed 10 seconds prior to touchdown, when the orbiter was at an altitude of 91 meters and traveling 150 meters a second. A final flare maneuver reduced the orbiter vehicle's descent rate to 0.9 meters a second 
with touchdown occurring at 100 to 150 meters a second, depending on the weight of the orbiter vehicle. After the landing gear touchdown, the crew deployed a drag chute out of the vehicle stabilizer and began wheel braking when the orbiter was traveling slower than 72 meters a second. After the orbiter's wheels stopped, the crew deactivated the flight components and prepared to exit. It was said that on a regular mission, the forces put on the body as the craft accelerated through the atmosphere were only 1.7 Gs. Sierra Space is confident that Dream Chaser can return critical cargo at less than 1.5 Gs using the same runway landing method. So far, there have been a few drop tests for this exact process. For example, in one instance, as the helicopter made its second try on the launch zone, all systems were green, and the Dream Chaser began its test flight. The space plane entered a steep 70 degree dive, quickly gaining airspeed to intercept the flight path for its normal Earth return. The space plane then performed a series of aerodynamic test inputs, designed to produce real data to validate control system parameters. Finally, the space plane deployed its landing gear, flared, and touched down on the Edwards runway. This landing will not only allow reuse opportunities, but it's intended to speed up the process of reviewing the spacecraft and getting it ready for the next mission. However, not only is the landing similar, but also the launch. In the shuttle's case, between T-6.6 seconds and T-3 seconds, while the RS-25 engines were firing but the SRBs were still bolted to the pad, the offset thrust would cause the space shuttle to pitch down 650 millimeters or 25.5 inches. The three second delay allowed the stack to return to nearly vertical before SRB ignition. At T minus zero, the eight frangible nuts holding the SRBs to the pad were detonated. The final umbilicals were disconnected, the SSMEs were commanded to 100% throttle, and the SRBs were ignited. By T plus 0.23 seconds, the SRBs built up enough thrust for liftoff to commence and reached maximum chamber pressure by T plus 0.6 seconds. In Dream Chaser's case, while the spacecraft won't be providing any help in the form of thrust, it does need a dedicated rocket to get it into orbit. By itself, Dream Chaser would not get very far at all. Once in space, however, it can maneuver accordingly. Uniquely, Dream Chaser can fly on any suitable launch vehicle, in other words, a rocket that can fit the spacecraft inside the fairings. At its core, the Dream Chaser space plane is a multi-mission vehicle capable of supporting a variety of LEO needs. It can be customized for both domestic and international customers via vehicle configuration, launch site, destination, landing site, duration, and a host of other variables. Sierra Space has already entered into agreements with multiple international space agencies. Together, they are developing technologies, applications, and missions for Dream Chaser-based space systems. Recently, we learned that the first launch of Dream Chaser Tenacity has been delayed from this summer to no earlier than December 2023. NASA updated its internal schedule to show that Sierra Space's Dream Chaser spacecraft will now berth to the International Space Station late this year. While not ideal, it's the first launch and is bound to be delayed some. Hopefully, in the coming months, the company provides more updates and gets ready for some final testing and preparation. Sierra Space is trying to revamp what a space plane is capable of and meant to do. Dream Chaser shares quite a few similarities and differences with the space shuttle, all of which are intended for the future goal of the spacecraft. We will have to wait and see how it progresses and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching.